Next up, we have Vincente Amado Alivo, who's going to talk about development of a global registry for peer review in astronomy. Hello, everyone. My name is Vicente Amalivo, and I'm a second year graduate student at Michigan State University. And uh, I'm very excited to share this work. And this work was done in collaboration with the Space Telescope Science Institute. And the team working on this were myself and my advisor, uh, Wolfgang Kurzendorf at Michigan State University. And so to start off, we are part of the Deep Thought Initiative. Um, here uh, is a QR code of our website and also um, the URL that you can uh, use to follow our work. And so we're an interdisciplinary group of astrophysicists and data scientists um, developing methodology and tools, working on uh, open source and open science methodology and tools, working on computational meta-research in astrophysics. And this is um, our team and our collaborator at Space Telescope, uh, Lou Stroger. And so today I will focus on, uh, at first I will discuss the allocation of community resources in astrophysics and how that is unique um, as they must be shared amongst the community. And then I will present our open source uh, reviewer registry called the DTI registry. Uh, and an important element of this is the problem of ambiguous author names and uh, I will fin finalize by discussing how we validated um, a few techniques. And so early on in astrophysics, a majority of telescopes were built by individual research groups for their specific research questions, um, such as the Hopkins Observatory. But as uh, these questions became more complex, uh, the community came together with large organizations such as NASA to build the Hubble Space Telescope and then more recently the uh, James Webb Space Telescope, um, observing further than we ever have before. And so these are community resources that must be shared amongst all astrophysicists, all researchers in this field to uh, perform their experiments. And they're also limited resources. Um, they can only observe uh, one uh, astronomers' targets at a time, and they need uh, ide specific conditions to be ideally used. And so a peer review process was created uh, requiring a proposal for an astrophysicist uh, to be able to perform their experiments. And so as an example, at the European Southern Observatory, um, they have been overwhelmed with reviews. And they have tracked uh, how many reviews, uh, how many uh, proposals they get, have gotten over the years, and they have five times more uh, proposals than they did in 1977. And so a study in the biomedical field found that 20% of researchers perform uh, over 70% of the reviews. And so if a minority of researchers review a majority of the proposals, this can cause non-expert reviews as uh, proposals are highly specialized. And so our, we propose and we pre will present um, an expansion of the reviewer pool to the global astronomical community so that we can diversify the reviewer pool geographically, demographically, and across specializations. And so one of the biggest problems for the observatories to find reviewers is uh, understanding who is a researcher in the field. And so uh, the DTI registry will have a unique profile for all active astrophysicists worldwide, which will contain relevant information for their peer review. And here's an example profile uh, of my advisor. And there will be extended metadata, and this can allow a facility to have finer grain searches. So as an example, if they want to involve more early career researchers and um, other examples as well. And this will be transparent and open to the community. And so to uh, build this, you must first gather reviewer information. And the first place you might think of is uh, the Open Research and Contributor ID, ORCID ID, which assigns a unique identifier to a researcher. Um, however, only roughly half of researchers in each field use uh, ORCID IDs in their work, and this is because uh, an, a researcher must actively sign up. Um, and it's unclear how up-to-date these are. And um, the next source of information is the NASA Astrophysics Data System, which is an online database of over 16 million astronomy and physics papers. and uh, the worldwide uh, experts are contained within the author list of these publications, but um, their identities are ambiguous as their name is, is scattered across their publications. 
And so these two sources uh, contain the worldwide astronomical community. And so um, we will use these to expand, um, to include more researchers and more reviewers than ever before. And so our pipeline uh, has a, the goal of creating unique researcher profiles. And there are many sources, as I said, um, for this information, and such as affiliation websites. But we choose astrophysics publications, as a majority of them are open access. And we extract the author names and the publication metadata, such as titles and abstracts. And then um, the publication metadata is input into the unique researcher profiles. And you can extract expertise from this. Um, and you can see Kurzendorf et al. 2020. And the, the publication metadata can also be cross-matched to external researcher uh, metadata sources, such as affiliation websites or ORCID IDs. And this can be leveraged to create a more robust, uh, unique researcher profile. And today, I'm going to um, talk specifically about the disambiguation, as um, there are some challenges here. And so um, here I will talk about the problems with disambiguation. And uh, there are problems finding unique authors. Specifically, they will be incorrectly merged. Uh, different authors have the same name. Um, for example, the last name Smith appears over 4,000 times, and the last name Lee appears over 23,000 times. And then names can be incorrectly split as well, as uh, an author's name appears differently across their publications. And this can be due to uh, appearing with and without their middle initials and uh, various reasons. However, this can disproportionately affect names from different regions. And as uh, similarly to what Pierre talked about yesterday, this can uh, cause a discount uh, to groups of people. And uh, that is our uh, goal, is to um, disambiguate them um, to not have this discount. And so um, we wanted to first validate uh, name-based techniques, as our database is of roughly uh, 1.8 million publications. Um, the most prevalent data is the author names themselves, and there are some techniques that uh, use author names, so we wanted to start there. And the first thing that we did was create a validation set, and we cross-matched astrophysics publications and ORCID identifiers, uh, and we found a, a database of 16,000 identified astrophysicists with uh, the true labels. And we then uh, validated simulated methods, as a majority of author name disambiguation algorithms are uh, either simulated with uh, simulated identities or uh, are unsupervised uh, machine learning tasks. And uh, we used our validation set to um, validate these name-based methods presented here. And we found 2.5 times more splitting and merging of names uh, than was presented. However, as just a preliminary result, we wanted to use um, these uh, methods uh, to disambiguate the publications from the uh, NASA astrophysics data system. And uh, we did this just for uh, the articles or PhD theses uh, in astrophysics, which is roughly 1.8 million publications. And so um, here we have our preliminary results. And um, this yellow line is the International Astronomical Union, which is one of the largest uh, ast astronomy societies in the world. And um, this blue curve, you can uh, see, it is the disambiguation using the first initial method, which um, in Newman 2001 is referred to as um, the lower bound, as it strictly just merges names together. And so um, what, what we see from this is that by only relying on uh, these societies and uh, uh, other groups like this, uh, we are missing a large chunk of the expertise that can be leveraged for peer review and to review proposals. And so um, we will continue to do more work on the disambiguation, but this is just a preliminary result where you can see the kind of the lower bound. And so for our future work, we are um, continuing to leverage the publication metadata and the uh, true labels from the ORCID um, validation set and to validate more uh, modern and computational uh, author name disambiguation algorithms such as using natural language processing on the titles or the abstracts. And so, just to summarize, um, in, in peer review in astrophysics, there is, uh, they have been overwhelmed with reviews, specifically uh, in their um, allocation of community resources. And uh, we present uh, a way to broaden the reviewer pool. And in our development of the registry, we found that current author information sources are incomplete, which leaves author identities to be ambiguous. 
and could the current um, methods, simulated methods, perform poorly with our validation set. Uh, and there are many, many new algorithms uh, available to be validated that have never been validated. And so thank you very much. This is the QR code for our website. Great, so we have um, about two minutes for questions. Please, Brian. Awesome talk, thank you for that. Uh, I think maybe you can help solve a problem that we've been trying to think about solving uh, in this space, and that is that the proposals for telescope time are functionally a form of pre-registration if they were made mm -hmm. more accessible yeah. and visible. And what seems like you're solving is that there could be a partnership with journals because your service may help them if we mm -hmm. conceive of this as a registered report process, where the review for telescope time is stage one. The journal uses the le peer reviewers that you've helped uh, on discovery to commit to publishing it regardless of outcomes. And then all the journal then has to do is follow up a uh, review to see if they did what they said they were going to do. Have you been thinking about that? Is the, it, does that fit with the model that you're working on? I think uh, we would definitely uh, be very interested in doing that and, and partnering with um, journals. Um, uh, as I'm not an astrophysicist, I'm not 100% sure if they do registered reports and if this is something that's in their workflow, but I think uh, definitely the proposals could act as something like that. And, um, but we would have to definitely discuss with journals and uh, set up a collaboration. And if uh, you're willing to talk to us more about the uh, registered reports, that we can share that with our community to learn more about that. Yeah. Hi, I'm really interested in this extraction of an expertise database um, from uh, your work. I'm curious if this is applicable to fields where there's a lot of interdisciplinary collaboration. Um, do you have a way of identifying, you know, basically through patterns of authorships, which authors are, have expertise where? My other question is, um, I, I'm not sure how author order works in astrophysics, but I'm curious if there's any way of addressing um, the level of contribution in mm -hmm. your data set. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, for expertise extraction, yeah, in uh, Kersendorf 2020, Kersendorf et al. 2020, um, you can see some more uh, specifics of how that's done. But uh, we use natural language processing techniques on all of the all of uh, the papers that someone has submitted to kind of represent their expertise. And so, as you're interdisciplinary, you, you can uh, you, your expertise will be shown within uh, different um, areas in that way. Um, and then uh, I forgot what your other question was. <laughs> author name. Uh, yeah, oh, order, name order, yeah. yes. Um, so in astrophysics, at least um, you're like the, the primary person is the first, uh, the first author, and the rest, uh, first and second author are the most important. The rest doesn't, uh, could be interchangeable, but um, I know at least in our group we try to use the uh, credit taxonomy, um, but it's, uh, we're one of the unique people who do, do that, and so it will, if this was expanded beyond just astrophysics, uh, there would have to be some fine-tuning, um, as I know in other fields, um, it's just based on alphabetical order, etc., and, um, but there's definitely things you can do to give more contribution. You just have to make it specific for each field as there's a difference. Thank you. We've got to move on to the next talk now. Thanks so much. Thank you.